And your father did eat of that bread in the wilderness and died. But I am the living bread that came from heaven. And those that eat of me will never die. Man, when we break bread through the scriptures and we partake of the Holy Spirit in communion, because that's the highest order, death has no portion to be in any form. God wants us to get to that point we can say, and, you know, we, we can stand up and say, man, I'll never be to the point where I won't have, where I'll walk in a lackluster faith. Okay. <laughs> like, everybody can like, okay, I don't know about that. It is a place when you partake of his nature. That's why Jesus told him in John 8, he said, if you ever ate of my word, if you tasted of my word, you should never, uh, you should never cease operation. You will always be in a realm that's full of life. Yeah, spirit, y'all. Yeah, that should make somebody clap. He, he you know, King Jimmy says, uh, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the, I like to say that, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. But the original Greek text says, having therefore, brethren, and confidence into the entrance of the holiest in the blood of Jesus. So it's not necessarily saying that we're just looking for a holy place. We found a holy man who got us into the place. Yes. Yes. Somebody mentioned holy ground. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. My house is holy ground. This building is holy ground. Wherever I go, it's holy. Not because of my occupation. It's because of what I carry. If you understand the substance of your hope that abides in you continually, wherever you go, the sole of your feet, you recognize it's holy. See, that's the impediment, that's the breach we have in our psyche to think that a certain moment is holy, a certain place is holy. When Jesus told him, said, hey, the hour coming when you don't have to worship in this mountain. It's a place, you don't have to wait on a certain day. You don't have to do all these feasts of the Lord and, you know, literal stuff that we do. Which was just a shadow of the substance of who Christ is. And so, we, standing in unison, being accepted in the beloved, is how we've entered in by the blood of Jesus. Not, not in my future, but in my acknowledgement of the living reality that has been consecrated from me. I, at that moment, can be carried into the holiest of holies in my spirit, man. And it's by his blood. And that word means to be in his blood. So we're not just talking about coming into the holiest. It's about, it means I have access because of his blood. We've been, in the spirit, we've been stained by his blood. That's why everything in the Old Testament, when they wanted to build the tabernacle, they had to dash it seven times with blood. Everything was blood spilled. That's why you had to be sacrifices, bull, goat, sheep, oxen, depending on your pedigree and your background. But blood was the answer because life is in the blood. And I have life because of his blood. You get what I'm saying? I know it's kind of sacrilegious, not necessarily. It's, 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 it's this thing in our heads of how can we process, process it? Well, that's why he gave us the Lord's Supper. And it's not just the sacrament. This happens by spirit. The true communion is of the spirit. We've been baptized no closer. We've been made to drink, right? Of the same spirit, one to another. And every time we come together and every time we meet, we're drinking out of that outpouring yes, yes. of His Spirit. So we're being in Christ, in Christ, in Him. That's what it means to be in Christ. So the blood, this transfusion, which was the outpouring of His life, donated on behalf of humanity is empowered by the indwelling of the Spirit. <sighs> I remember Apostle Burgess gave me something. I'm going to see if I can find it. Where it said the Holy Spirit was shed in Acts 2. You can read it on your own. It literally said blood. 
And I, he told me that. I'm like, wow. And I went to look it up. So even when the Spirit was poured out, I had to look it up to find out what, what, what word because that ain't in my notes. <laughs> but I just it was brought to my remembrance. So even that was an act. Pentecost wouldn't have never been released without the shedding of blood. So we have access to God because we've been consecrated and that the old system is no longer in existence. And when we realize what has been finished in Christ and the new covenant, how we were ratified by his blood, that we are forever able to be joined to Christ because of the resurrection of Christ. That's why it's so important for us to understand. That's how we're able to bear fruit unto God. The reason why we are not able to bear fruit or to live effectively or to prosper it's because we never really spend time on what, how, how the death, burial, resurrection got rid of the old man. We don't know the system. We have a system failure because we've never really been taught. And so I'm, that's why I'm spending time to show you. You know what I'm saying? Just giving you some words so you can go back for yourself. But I can go through scriptures. I know you want me to walk through scriptures and show you. But it's a whole bunch of scriptures regarding his blood. But I want to show you the oneness aspect, how we've been joined into Christ, and how we've been raised from the dead already. That's why Romans 6 talks about it. Being planted in the likeness of his death, we've been resurrected in the newness of his life. And they talk about the baptism, they ain't talking about water. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's a baptism with, then there's a baptism of. The baptism with is the outpouring we get, you know, the gifts. Remember in Acts it said they were, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost? But then there's a baptized of, because of denotes origin of something. So we were baptized of the Spirit. Amen? We, as soon as we drunk of the Spirit, as soon as we accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, the Spirit of Christ came in our heart. That was the impartation of the initial grace. Yes. Where that, when we partook of that grace, it bore witness with our spirit and in our, deep within our soul, even though our mind can't articulate it, it said, I'm a father. Mm -hmm. And when you understand and you respond to the spirit of Abba Father, which is connected to your inheritance, then you're able to go to scriptures and decode it and say, wow. This is what Paul was talking about because Paul was a professor of the finished work. He was. No other individual had as much understanding at that time of what it meant to be finished. Now there are many of us being raised. You know what I said, us. Many of us in the earth are going to be raised up to show and bring people into the, not just the acknowledgement of what was finished, but the articulation of what was finished and the demonstration of his reality. You can do that. You can acknowledge it. It's there. I can see it. But then the articulation, being able to say, this is the way. Walk you in it. Then all of a sudden, you can bring fruit unto God, like it says in Romans 7. It says we can bring forth fruit unto God. Because that is the truest sign of repentance. Not your knowledge. Not the gifts. Fruit. Fruit is the sign. No fruit, no repentance. No fruit. No understanding of the divine life. Yeah. You can attempt to acknowledge and to articulate, but you can't demonstrate. Because that's where the acid test comes. Other people will be convinced that your life has changed. Not through your acknowledgement, say I'm saved, or your articulations, because you can break open a few pieces in the Bible, but because your life becomes a personification of your orthodoxy. Amen. And you know what the next one is. Yeah. What is it? Oh, right. right practice. Yeah. Practice. We need to make sure we're putting the things into practice, into work that is engaging us, right? So he, through that blood that I'm talking about and that divine union of his life that's now resident in all of us and you can have clarity as the reality of it being in existence in you because there is a new life, a new expression because through witness 
and testimony of the scriptures and of the spirit, you are forever joined to him. And out from that outflowing and the outpouring of his life, you can express it. And then you can express uh, the resurrection life that's on the inside of you, the life that will glorify the Father. Knowing within yourself that it is an everlasting covenant based on relationship. Covenant, that's what it's about, y'all. It wasn't about getting you to heaven. It wasn't about making you sure you escape hell. It's because we lost something. He came to seek and save that which was lost. What was lost? Our communion. I mean, that's what was lost. That is what broke the heart of the Father. He made sure you're going to be all right because he took the keys of Revelation 1 and 18. He took the keys of death and hell. The devil don't have either one. Am I right? Who has the keys? Jesus got the keys. He's the Alpha and the Omega. First and the last. He has the keys. Gave it to the church. When we stop playing around, guess what? No more what? Death. No more hell. That's a whole other message that most of us ain't ready to study because we still stuck in the in the matrix of the church. We still uh, get milk. We still, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking here. Uh, but it's a relationship of oneness. That's why Hebrews 2 and 11 said, For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all one. Ain't that powerful? Not my sanctification, not your sanctification. But because he was sanctified. That's why I told you. He said, Be ye holy, for I'm holy. Jesus told us, John 15, You can do nothing without me. So you'll find out when you go in the new covenant, guess what, gets, guess what happens? He increases and you decrease. The more I study, the more knowledge I get, I don't get a big head because guess what? He's working in me to will and to do of his good pleasure, not my good pleasure. His good pleasure is being worked out on the inside of me. And he promised he'll perfect everything that concerns him or concerns me. 